set builder notation. Suppose the set A consists of three elements, 1, 2, and 3. Another way we can describe the set A is to say that the set A consists of the integers which are bigger than 0 and smaller than 4. Yet another way to write out the set A is to use the so-called set builder notation. We can write A as the set which consists of all the integers x which satisfy the following property. x is bigger than 0 and smaller than 4. Let's go through this a little more slowly. The set A consists of those elements x which are members of the set Z, that is the set of integers, and which satisfy the property that x is between 0 and 4. The vertical bar punctuation mark here just says that in order to be a member of A, x has to satisfy the property or properties listed to the right of the vertical bar. Here's another example. Suppose the set B consists of all the countries with at least 1 billion people. So that's China and India. In set builder notation, we can write the set B as being the set of elements x which satisfy the property that x is a country with at least 1 billion people. So in contrast to our previous example where we specified that the elements x must belong to the set of integers, in this example of the set B, to the left of the vertical bar, we do not restrict what x can possibly be. So we say that x can be anything whatsoever, so long as it satisfies the property that is listed to the right of the vertical bar. Let's go back to the set A, which we'll modify a little by changing z, the set of integers, to r, the set of real numbers. Let's call this new set C. How can we express this set C in words? The set C is simply going to be the set of real numbers x, which satisfy the property that x is bigger than 0, and smaller than 4. And of course, we already know that there's an alternative piece of notation for C. We can write C simply as such. Let's now consider another set D, the set of all perfect squares. So D would just be the set consisting of 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on and so forth. How would we write down the set D in set builder notation? Here's one possible way. D is the set of things x which satisfy the property that there is an integer y such that y squared is equal to x. Notice that a perfect square is precisely any object that satisfies the property to the right of the red vertical bar. That is, it's any object which satisfies the property that there's an integer y such that y squared is equal to that object. Hence, D is indeed the set of perfect squares. Let's take this opportunity to introduce some new notation. There's actually a symbol which stands for the English words there is or there exists. It looks like this. It's an uppercase E but flipped around. So this symbol here just stands for the English words there is or there exists. And also, instead of saying in the English words there exists an integer y, we can instead write out there exists an object y in the set of integers z. And finally, there is also a mathematical punctuation mark which stands for the English words such that. This is the colon punctuation mark. So whenever you see this colon, it's just short for such that. So from now onwards, since they are writing such that, we'll usually use the colon instead. Indeed, the vertical bar punctuation mark is actually also short for the English words such that. So instead of using the vertical bar punctuation mark, some writers use the colon instead. But we'll usually stick with using the vertical bar here, so as not to be confused with any colons that we might use to the right of the vertical bar. So now, we can write the set D as the set of objects X which satisfy the property that there exists an element Y in the set of integers Z such that Y squared is equal to X. Of course, in the case of our set D, it's much easier to just describe it in English words as being the set of all perfect squares. But as our sets become more complicated, you'll see that our notation will come in very handy. Here's another example. Let's see if you can figure out what the set E is. E is the set of integers x which satisfy the property that if y is also an integer, then y divided by x is also an integer. What does the set E consist of? Well, the set E is actually just going to consist of two elements, namely 1 and negative 1. The reason for this is simple. This is because 1 and negative 1 are the only integers x which satisfy the property that if we are given any integer y, then y divided by x is also an integer. Or in other words, 1 and negative 1 are the only two numbers by which every other integer y is divisible. Let's try another example. Suppose the set f consists of all the objects x which satisfy the property that there exists integers y and z such that x is equal to y divided by z. What is the set f? Well, it turns out that the set f is really just a set of rational numbers. 
This is because f consists of precisely those objects which can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. And that is precisely how rational numbers are defined. Second last example before we call it a day, suppose to set g consists of all the real numbers which satisfy the property that x is a cow. It turns out that in this case, the set G is just the empty set. And this, of course, is simply because there is no real number X which satisfies the property that X is a cow. In other words, there is no real number which is also a cow. And so G must be empty. Last example, suppose the set H consists of all the real numbers. And we do not require that each element X satisfies any property. Then what is the set H? Well, the set H is in fact just a set of real numbers. In the next video, we'll look at union, intersection, and set minus. If you'd like to go to the start of this series of videos, you can also click on the link at the bottom right.